Well, it's a cold and windy day at this sustainable house, and um, the weekend forecast isn't for much um, improvement in the weather. So this weekend what I'm going to work on is turning these two beds, this one here and the other one on the other side here, into wicking gardens. Well actually, to be more specific, I'm going to turn this one into a wicking garden and this one's going to stay exactly as it is for another couple of weeks. So these beds were originally built uh, to be part of the aquaponics solution. These were actually going to be the garden beds or the um, filter beds for the fish tanks. However, I haven't got around to doing the aquaponics yet and I probably won't for another 6 to six to 12 months. So what I've decided to do is turn these into wicking gardens instead and then do the um, aquaponics at a later date. Now the concept of a wicking garden is basically what we have is we have a, a two layer garden. The bottom uh, bottom layer, the bottom sort of uh, you know 15 centimeters or 20 centimeters depending on what, what size garden you've got um, is sort of basically like an aquifer, an artificial aquifer. What you basically have is we have some pipes that will run underneath here with an upright and then we'll fill the base with gravel. Now when we water, we water through the upright and what it will mean is we'll actually have like a little lake, a little pond of water underneath the garden. On top of that we put a, a layer of some sort of geofabric um, just to stop the soil sort of filtering down through the um, uh, through through the, the mix at the bottom and then we put some nice um, potting soil or um, good garden soil, good friable garden soil, lots of compost in on top. Now in this case we have these boxes which I built some time ago. Now they're um, from, the, from that corner up to the top is actually 400 mils or thereabouts and you can see where it's been um, braced using other bits of plank. So what the first thing I have to do here in this video essay is I'm going to use this carpet which has got a little bit of wet with the rain today and I'm going to tack this carpet up inside here and put another piece in here so that when I line it with plastic and I'm using some um, lovely orange builders plastic I'll line this whole bed with one piece of plastic the plastic won't get torn on the edges of these braces and the like or any of the rough edges of the timber so I'll use this carpet which is old um, recycled carpet out of a club I think um, and we'll, we'll uh, then line it with plastic. The next step after that will be we'll put in the, um, uh, the, the filling pipe and the gravel which is up on top here, the filling pipe and the gravel. Uh, we'll go in into the base and then what we'll do is we'll bring it up, we'll put the geofabric on top and tomorrow I'll go get some nice um, compost, the local uh, landscape supplies have some wonderful compost which is um, interestingly enough about 40% coffee grounds. So, but anyway, and then we'll put the compost over the top, mulch it, and we've got a wicking garden bed all set up and ready to go. What I'll do is this video will step through each of the steps. So this is just sort of an introduction to it. I'll um, skip on now and, and get on with the job, and I'll come back at various stages and give you a little update of what's happening. Okay. Well, it's been about oh, half an hour, 40 minutes, and we've got to the next stage of the process. As you can see, I've uh, I have lined, <laughs> apart from the wind, I have lined the um, the bottom with, with the carpet, which you can't see, but I've also then lined it with plastic. Now it looks a bit rough and ready at the moment, and it will do um, for a little while. But what will happen is once we've got it all completed, around this top, you can see where it, it folds over here. I'll actually um, cut that off fairly close, and it's going to have a a, um, a wooden top put on it. So it should look quite quite ni nice and finished when it's completed. What just fell over as we started talking through the wind is the water distribu distribution pipe which is now in the bottom. So as you can see what we have is we have some 90 mil uh, stormwater pipe and you can see I've studded the stormwater pipe with holes and all those holes are on the one side and they're all on the upside at the moment. They will actually be turned around and put on the downside but if I put them around that way initially you wouldn't be able to see anything. So it comes around to this little elbow just down here and then it comes up to the top. Now this is actually, I've, I've made this uh, higher than it really needs to be because the soil is going to come up to about here. I'm actually going to paint the top and I think it'll look quite quite attractive. And the reason I've put it this end near this post is I actually have an automatic watering system running across the fascia there. So I'll run, let's try to get the angle right, down this post I'll run some um, four mil drip lines and into the top here which will actually automatically water this garden. It'll take a little bit of um, uh, you know, 
practice to get it right, but it'll it'll actually water the garden beautifully. So the next step is to um, is to turn this pipe over, put it in, and then to move this, this washed gravel into the base and to cover this pipe. This is 90 mil. I'm going for about between 10 and 15 mil um, uh, reservoir. I've got 400 mil in the whole garden, uh, 10 or 15 mil. 100 or 150 mil um, reservoir. So I've got 400 mil in the, in the garden, so it'll leave with 20 or 25 centimetres of uh, topsoil on for that, so that'll be really quite nice. So, anyway, I will move on with the next step and um, I'll come back as soon as I've got that completed. Okay, so we've um, it's been about 40 minutes or so since the last post, so so far about two hours or so of time. And um, as you can see, I've filled the the um, planter box, I guess, the planter box with uh, gravel. So this is using um, some river river gravel. I chose the river gravel because it's quite coarse, uh, so it should allow lots of water uh, to be stored within it. Um, and also, it's um, it's got rounded edges, so it shouldn't damage the plastic. You can also see that I've put I've had the put the um, water pipe in which goes right through to the far corner with those holes all downwards. The reason the holes are downwards are to inhibit or prevent the growth of plant roots down into the um, in, into the pipe and blocking it. So with it upward, upright, plant uh, roots generally don't grow against gravity so it should help prevent that. It won't stop it, but it'll help prevent it. I've also put a first coat of paint over the top and you can see I've put a, a little lid on here and that lid's just designed to um, stop mozzies breeding in the water. You can also see I've put a piece of timber across the top and this is just resting there at the moment but it sort of indicates how it's going to be finished off and if you can imagine this bit of uh, plastic is clipped back underneath that timber it should look quite nice particularly when it's full. The other thing I've done is I've drilled three holes through the side and these holes demonstrate the um, the depth of the um, of, of the gravel. So we've got about 100 mil depth of gravel. And basically, these pipes are for overflow. So basically, what happens is we water the, the um, garden through this pipe, and the reservoir fills up with water. These pipes um, sit at the top top of the um, of, of the reservoir. And if we, if the watering system was to fail or if it overwatered this bed, the water would rise up, and without these pipes, the water would continue to go up and would flood the entire bed. Very few of the plants that we like to eat are bog plants and will grow in water, so they'll just die and that'll be it. So instead, what we've done is we've got these pipes here, and as you can see, I've actually put a whole stack of little holes in those, plus the end is open, and that can be turned up that way and it will be pinned down into the reservoir just like that and then the soil will go on top of that or the geofabric will go on top and the soil will go on top of that on top of the geofabric and the concept being is this, the, if the water continues to rise it will actually flow out these pipes and will flow out these pipes at the end here and onto the grass area longer term once I finish this is to put a, a, a very small bed in here and I'm only talking about 40, 50 centimetres wide, um, and that will grow um, probably comfrey or various other plants like that that can use this excess water. The reason I only want a very narrow bed here is because you can see where the, the planter box has been placed, and the reason it's been placed there is so that I can actually hang some, um, uh, what's I'm looking for, some trellising up on that section and I can grow climbing plants up, up on there. So the plants will grow in the bed, they'll grow up up on, on, on the place, and as you're standing in here where the barbecue is and all that sort of stuff, you can imagine during the heat of summer, most of that's going to be covered with plants and it will be really quite cool and lovely inside here. So that's basically where we're at today, and that's about as far as I can get, mainly because I don't have the um, compost to go in the top. So that's tomorrow's job. So what I'll do is I'll um, pack up for this evening. Tomorrow morning we'll um, tie these these um, bits down, the the uh, overflow pipes down. We'll put the geofabric on, and I'll um, get the uh, the compost to go in on top of these bit this bed. Once I've got that in, I'll um, then come back and show you the finished product, 
and we'll see how it works. Okay, well one day has passed and I've um, managed to get into town and pick up the um, Botany Humus, which is the, um, the compost here. It's a commercial compost that's made out of um, uh, coffee grounds and household rubbish as well as ground up uh, trees and things. So it's actually a very, very good mix. I don't know if you can actually see it, but where I've been digging in, in the back of the ute there, it's, it's still steaming. Um, so it's really got a lot of um, biological activity in it. And for some reason, the honeybees, the European honeybees, seem to like the smell of it because I've had quite a few hanging around since I started shoveling. But anyway, back to the bed, bed in question. So here's the, um, the wicking bed almost completed. So as you can see, what I've done is um, from yesterday where we had the, the um, reservoir in with the rocks and we had the overflow tubes, I've put in a, a geofabric. Um, and this is actually sort of a, it's folded over, so it's a double thickness of geofabric, and it sits up the sides just slightly. And then I'm putting this um, compost on it. Basically, I mean, for all intents and purposes, what we're making here is a giant um, self-watering pot. So just like the self-watering pots you can buy, you know, the decor self-watering pots that they sell in Bunnings and other um, hardware stores, um, this is just a, basically a very large version of a self-watering pot. Uh, you can see those overflow pipes out at the bottom there. This bucket in the middle looks a little bit odd, but this is actually um, a bit of a trial. Some of the stuff I've read about wicking gardens, they talk about how uh, useful it is to have worms in them. And um, so what I've done here, and it's, it's based on a, a um, uh, another video I saw where someone else made one of these, is I've put this handy pail, this 20 litre pail in here. I've drilled some holes at the bottom and a couple of air holes at the top and we've got the lid just loosely on top and I've put some of the botany humus inside. The concept being is what I'll do is once this is settled and, and it's had a bit of time to um, to cool down the like, I'll introduce worms into this worm farm and periodically household scraps and non-woody stuff from this garden uh, refuse will just go into the top here, go in there, the lid will go on and the worms will um, come in through the holes to eat where the food is, is, is quite concentrated. And then, of course, they'll also spread out and they'll take their castings and stuff out through the garden. Um, the worms will also do another activity, and that is that when this garden is harvested, I'm going to try as much as possible to leave roots in the ground. Obviously, if I want to eat the roots, different killer fish. But let's say I've got um, beans growing in here or something like that up on a trellis, when I cut them out I'll, I'll just cut them off at ground level, a little bit below ground level and let the roots break down the soil. That should always be in, improving the fertility. It's not much but it should help a little bit. So the next step uh, to finish this garden off is to cut off this excess geo fabric, um, fill the garden with the botany humus so there's a little bit more to do on that and then I'm going to go around and um, just, uh, clean up the edges of the plastic to clean the plastic up and then using this timber put the timber surrounds on. So um, hopefully by the end of today we'll have a lovely uh, completed garden and hopefully it'll look re reasonably decent. I'll come back and show you the finished product. And here we are with the finished product. So as you can see I've capped off um, the garden bed and I've started laying some mulch across the top. I am um, actually ran out of mulch. I thought I had some more at home but clearly don't. But um, as you can see, the garden bed is all set up and is ready to go. So that will be planted, um, I'll finish mulching it this week, and it will be planted out this week. So there's five square metres of garden space that should, in theory, be um, incredibly efficient with the water being the um, wicking beds. So hopefully, this will, um, we'll revisit this in three or four weeks and just see what sort of growth we're getting in here.